risen Lord He purchased my redemption My righteousness is He Exalt the name of Jesus, for he is worthy, for he alone, for he alone is worthy. To worship and adore the Lamb of God, victorious, my risen Lord. He purchased, he purchased my redemption, my righteousness is he, exalt the name of Jesus, he is worthy. He purchased my redemption, my righteousness is he exalt the name of jesus he is worthy shall we bless the lord shall we praise the name of jesus he purchase our redemption our righteousness is him bless the name of jesus we too can say had it not been for the lord on our side then where would we have been and so tonight i greet you all in the mighty name of jesus welcome one welcome all for another night of study mighty god the word the word of god told us that we are to study to show ourselves approved and so tonight we give god thanks for this opportunity where we can come to listen to his words to learn more of him bless the name of jesus and tonight we'll sing from our hymnal him 134 it was jesus my savior who died on the tree shall we bless the name of jesus hallelujah it was Jesus my Savior who died on the tree to open a fountain for sinners like me. His blood is the fountain that pardon bestows and cleanses the foulest wherever it flows. For the conquering Savior shall break every chain and give us the victory again and again. For the conquering Savior 
shall break every chain and give us the victory again and again and when I was willing with all things to part he gave me my bounty his love in my heart so now I am joined with the conquering band who are marching to glory at Jesus command for the conquering Savior and give us the victory again and again for the conquering savior shall break every chain and give us the victory again and again though round me the storms of adversity roll and the waves of destruction encompass my soul in vain this frail vessel the tempest shall toss my hopes rest secured on the blood of the cross oh for the conquering savior shall break every chain and give us the victory again and again for the conquering savior shall break every chain and give us the victory again and again shall we bless the lord shall we praise the name of jesus when we was willing with all things to part that's when he gave us his bounty his love in our heart shall we worship the lord bless the name of jesus and tonight we give god thanks that he has given us that bounty is love in our heart at this time we invite our missionary holiness to come and open in prayer in jesus name bless the lord and give us the victory again and again hallelujah father we worship you we glorify you we exalt you to your word 
the conquering Savior shall break every chain and give victory again and again. He said, those who are lost, you are going to look for them, Jesus. Those who are weak, you are going to strengthen. He said, those who don't know you will know you. And if we are coming to that last and closing days, when all these things will happen, but before these things, we have so much things are happening. Perilous time, trials and temptation, destruction, left, right, and center. But this, when you see all these things, it's just the beginning of sorrow. Tonight, God, we just want to thank you for your blessings upon us. You just want to thank you for the desire that we are alive and have the mind and desire to come to the house of God, even to sing because you say we are one and two are dwell. Touching anything concern you, you are there to bless. Almighty God is not a crowd but a sincere heart that is willing and ready to obey your word. Tonight we truly thank you for being here. We ask that you stash your blood all over Kente tonight. We ask that you surround Kente with your blood, mighty God. We pray that you lift up Kente in the name of Jesus. We pray that you search out this community holy ghost and we pray mighty god that as you map out you will take soul for your kingdom those who to save will save those who to remove will remove mighty god tonight we just want to declare war over our community god we place in every home in the name of jesus we say when i see the blood i will pass over you god we pray that even one soul in our home because mighty god after one soul mercy will extend but not for long if others don't decide their mind to surrender to the lordship of your God. But tonight we pray that you will touch the home. Deliver the homes God. Homes need to be delivered. Mighty God Almighty home need to be delivered. Your people need to be delivered. Israel need to be delivered. Mighty God tonight we ask that you scatter your blood mighty God and draw your people out of Lodabar. Draw your people out of destruction. Draw your people out of fear and doubt mighty God. Tonight God as we stand in your house another time to with the man of God to declare the word unto us we pray God that we will not have it in years, but we will eat the word mighty God and we will try to live the word in the name of Jesus thank you for the strength and the desire that you give him almighty God to still come in though he's coming from afar and so much of us are living so near and yet we are not coming but mighty God never let that tree die we pray in the name of Jesus, you continue to water his soul, mighty God, and continue to use him to your own honor and glory. For those who are coming, God, we ask that you are in their footsteps. For those who contemplate in the matter, we ask that you will lose them and give them the desire to come. For those who are on the way from country to town, we pray, God Almighty, that you carry them safe. Almighty God, we look to you. Cover us as we sit in this house. Cover us, Lord, as we sit in this square. Jamaica, Jamaica, Jamaica need deliverance. Our community need deliverance. Our square need deliverance. Our men need deliverance. Our children need deliverance. All and middle-aged parents need deliverance. So tonight, God, as we listen to the word, we pray that you will send your holy angel to deliver, to set free, to cut and clear, as we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Thanking you, our missionary wholeness, and at this time, as our pastor come, with the word that God has laid on his heart, help us make, we, make him welcome. Bless the name of Jesus. Welcome, Reverend Salmon, in the blessed Holy Ghost. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. We give God thanks for another evening where we can meet in his fashion to edify each other through the study of God's word. We give God thanks that uh, the privilege is still there. We're going to meet in his fashion. As I said, in many places, persons are not that privileged. Persons are being persecuted uh, for their belief. And they believe in Jesus Christ, who is the only way, the only truth, and only one who can give life. And so I greet those who are on the online platform, uh, sharing with us tonight, and those who are in the hall. I trust tonight that as we go through the word of God, that you will be edified and God will be glorified and his will be done in our lives. This evening I want to share from the book of St. Matthew, St. Matthew chapter 6. We want to look on one verse of scripture. St. Matthew chapter 6, we're going to look on verse 33, a famous passage of scripture that we want to uh, edify the people of God with tonight. And I read thus. But seek ye first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness. And all these things should be added unto you. Say Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Or and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto thee. Let us look to the Lord at this time in prayer. And so, Father, we thank you, God, that you're never tired of hearing us. And, Father, you're never too busy to attend unto our prayers. I said, men ought to pray and not faint. For the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. We thank you, God, that Jesus Christ is our righteousness. And so we come to you, Holy Father, in his name. The name that is above every name. That even by the authority of Jesus, we can have access to, to heaven and the glory that you, we share with him. Father, though preparation has been made, we pray, God, that you may breathe upon the written word. That the written word, Father, may come alive even to our hearts tonight. That, God and Father, that the word, O oh Grandfather, will transform. The word will renew. The word, O oh Grandfather, will bring about a change. May the written word come alive, God, that we may become the living word as we seek to be the righteousness of you in this earth. I seek, God, the, un the unction for this task. For we know the importance of the anointing, breaking yokes within and important to do. So glorify yourself, even our Father, to glorify you through this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless God. If I should give tonight's study a topic, it would be, it is the kingdom and not the all others. It is the kingdom and not the all others we should seek. It is the kingdom and not the all others we should seek. Brothers and sisters, we're in a time where many persons think that their success is dependent on what they do. Some persons think that it's based on their ability they will be able to achieve. But not only that, the word of God through Jesus Christ clearly state the things are that which we must seek. He said we should what? Seek the kingdom. And not only seek the kingdom, but seek it first. It's clear that Jesus would have known that there are other things that we will be seeking. There will be other things that we may, we may love. And as he said to Peter, in St. John 21, he said to Peter, Lovest thou me more than this? So it's clear that there will be things that you and I will pursue. And we may be aggressive in that pursuing. But what would be interesting that these things are those things that Jesus says will come after we seek his kingdom. We we'll find today that there are a lot of persons seeking after the all others. When the all others is already a given after we seek the kingdom. And that's why our person abandoning the king and his kingdom because we are seeking after the all others. Why Jesus said that, brothers and sisters? We should seek the kingdom first. In St. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, it says, No man can serve two masters. We will eat one and love the other. We will obey one and disobey the other, or dishonor the other. What are these saying to brothers and sisters? That as humans, we cannot accurately love equally. We cannot accurately love equally. 
And why, brethren? Because of our personality. Our personality of a way to create a bias. And bias is not wrong. All of us have bias. We cannot avoid being biased. There's a difference between being biased and partial. When you're in a bias, it means that we have a preference. And some of those preferences, it's natural. Where we may desire a certain color, it's natural. We may gravitate towards a certain personality. But we the Bible warns that you and I should not relate partial. When we relate partial, it means that we are discriminating. We are comparing one thing above the other. One thing that they, they want parents not to do. It doesn't matter how many children you have. It's going to be natural. They're going to love one more than the other. But you cannot let them know. And the one that you may love more than the other, it may not necessarily be the one that loves you more than the other. But it's a natural thing. What we should be careful of, that we don't discriminate in our relating. By virtue of our role, we seek to meet the needs of our children. And don't even allow our children to get the hint that there is a love for one against the other. So Jesus says, it is impossible for you and I to love equally. I'm not for, that's one of the things that he confronted uh, Peter with in St. John 21. He said to Peter, Peter, lovest thou me? And Peter said yes. Then he went on and said, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? So Jesus was saying, Peter, I know that you love me. But there are other things that are competing for your love. And the thing is it, that that which you love is more than the love that you have for me. Because if you love me first, then you would not have been by the seaside catching fish. When I call you to be fishers of men. So let us brothers and sisters. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14b to verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter 6, a, a powerful text. A text that a lot of person would have shared from. Some use it appropriately, while some use it inappropriately. I want to use it in the context of this topic here tonight. Of we not serving two masters without hate one and love the other. Hear what it says. What fellowship are the righteousness with unrighteousness? So in essence, once we seek to serve two masters, we know it is light and darkness that seek the attention of humans. It is God and the devil that seek after the souls of humans. God represents light. The devil represents darkness. So Jesus was saying, and Paul here was saying in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, that there are no correlation between the light and the darkness, or there's no fellowship between the, uh, the righteous and the unrighteous. Look at this, brothers and sisters. One person said something which sounds good, but it's not true. That darkness is the absence of light. Rubbish. Hmm? Darkness cannot be the absence of light. The two of them are entities. But the thing is that they can't call exist. They cannot coexist. They're always at odds with each other. For example, if you enter this building at a certain time of the evening and the switch, the light switch and that on, this building would be in what? Darkness. 
We flip the switch. What's going to happen? Light. So in essence, before the flip, the switch is flipped, there was darkness. So me, brothers and sisters, darkness cannot be the absence of light or light cannot be the absence of darkness because they are two entities, but they cannot coexist. I want to use a flip side to it. We're going to use a candle. So we have a candle. We lit that candle. That candle will create light. But if you blow on that candle, what's going to happen? Darkness. Or that candle burn until it's finished. What's going to happen? Darkness. So darkness cannot be the absence of light or light cannot be the absence of darkness. There are entities that exist within themselves but they cannot coexist. So Jesus was saying, no way righteousness and unrighteousness can have fellowship. He went further. What communion has light with darkness? He went further, the Apostle Paul. What concord, that means, what agreement has Christ with Belial? And brethren, the word Belial, you know, is not a good word. So somebody tell you, say, you're a son of Belial. You don't smile. Because it's the worst definition that they are putting to you. To be a son of Belial means that you are a person with no integrity. To be a son of Belial it means that you cannot be trusted. To be a son of Belial means that you will sell your parents your piece of bread. A son of Belial means that you don't care about nobody, not even yourself. Whatever presents itself as opportunity, you will seek it at the expense of everybody else and everything else. So Jesus says, Paul says, I mean, there cannot be no agreement with Christ, with Belial. I went further. What path hath he that believeth with an infidel? And brethren, the word infidel is more than just a sinner. When you say a person is an infidel in Britain, when you literally say, you know, there's no rougher identity. No rougher identity. So when somebody say you're infidel in Britain, it means nobody willing to identify with you, nobody willing to own you. Yes, man. So when you say a child is infidel, in essence, what you're saying, you, know, you don't know the father. But, but, but even though you can't identify the mother, because the mother showed the signs for the nine months, but the mother may not give no regard. So they say you are infinite, mean that you are a nobody, you are no warrior. You have no covering, you have no identity, you have no uh, inheritance, you have no uh, uh, hope, no refuge. You are uh, a no warrior. And what agreement are the temple of God with idols? Britain, this is so profound as the Apostle Paul seeks to expand. He went further by saying, I will be dear God. He, he testified you know, where God said, listen up, I am willing to go into relationship with you. I will be their God and they shall be my people. But come with a condition, Britain. This is a condition. Hear what it says. Come out from among them. Hmm? And be he separate. Say the Lord. Brethren, one of the things I love about God, you know, God in his infinite knowledge, no time will come mankind and rebel. How in the of the Bible? So I tell my command, say, Pastor say it. Uh, the soup say it. The deacon say it. The, no, the Lord said, listen up. This is my command. This is the terms of reference for us to have fellowship. You have to come out and be one. Separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean things. But then one may ask a question. Why Jesus says we should seek the kingdom and everything else with added? You know what Jesus was literally saying? There are some things that you and I worry about that he already made provision for. 
But the only way for us to access those things is through the kingdom. Bridget, can I give you a little hint? In Genesis chapter 1, somebody asked a question, why God create man last? God create man last because God see it prudent to create everything that man would need before man come into existence. Because humans have a tendency for Burma. This is what they do to Moses in the wilderness. So God made everything that man would need for life and godliness before man came on the seat. So in essence, what the Lord was saying to man, listen up man, just seek fellowship. Everything else is already in place. See what is said in verse 25 of St. Matthew chapter 6. Take no thought for your life. Can I tell you something, Britain? If every time people taking thought for their life is no. If every time people of God say that they, 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 they're trying to chart their own path, it is no. The Lord said, take no thought for your life. It's not an empty statement. It's not a, a, a blanket statement. He was saying that because provision is already made, but the only way you can access it is through the kingdom. So take no thought for your life what he shall eat. But I said before and I want to say it again. I yet to find a human being in a Jamaica, I can't speak for anywhere else in the world, that died from malnutrition in Jamaica. God is so wise that I when it thinks scares and, 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 and recession and all sort of stuff, God made the fruit tree them bear exponentially. Hmm? God made the fish them breed up exponentially. Huh? And the farmers them who plant the yellow yam. Normally the palmer worm and the canker worm and the caterpillar would have gone and eat out a quarter and maybe eat out half that particular here. God create an abundance awesomeness of God. And that's why God was able to say, take no thought. Do you know the unsaved man? And, and this is an element of truth in this virgin. Don't worry about what I'm going to eat. A people who say that people have got a fussy and sometimes God provides for we and we still fussy but we tired of that when we should eat and give thanks. I've seen a lot of person who are not working and some of them don't want to work. Them no worry. They go out to them bed and sleep and, and have confidence that when they wake up but you know why they can't have confidence Bridget? the word of God say my God for a rain upon the just and the unjust. The struggle is brothers and sisters is you and I not relying on God. You and I not trusting God. You and I seeking after the all others which God already made provision for. All God is saying, if you're going to get this, you're going to get the key and the key is from the kingdom and when we access the kingdom and get the key, then we can lose, we can bind and we can have access and fullness. So it says, Sometimes we are worried what we shall eat before we need to give God thanks even for appetite. So we are murmur. Eh? Thank God to have appetite. Some people are drip them off your take. See a line. Huh? And we are complaining. Not true. What we cover? We say mackerel. We say canned beef. We say sardine. Huh? We say sausage. Vienna sausage. I hear today not be see for saltfish. Why well, some people wish that they have options? And we are complaining, but we tired us. Tired. Give God thanks. 
tongues. They have an appetite to eat. Because the food can be there and the appetite is not there. I don't know if you ever find yourself in that situation. Gas ever hit you yet, brethren? And you see the food and I guess stick you up, bend you up. You smell the food through the heat, but you can't eat it because you don't have no appetite for it. Or if you ever sick. Huh? A flu, that's another one. You have flu. <laughs> you have a certain type of flu in a brethren. Yeah, you see the food. You, you feel hungry because a man, you know, you know, you ask for some food and when the food cook. Oh, you don't look at it, you just a turn over with your fork. Can I eat this? No appetite. So the Lord says, don't worry about this because provision is already made. Not yet for your body what he shall put on. Brethren, if every time it's a close cheap, I know. Eh? One time I was passing on downtown. I mean, someone said ten dollar one. When I look at female underwear, I couldn't believe that Jamaica. Eh? At a twenty dollar blows, fifty dollar blows, sell out. Hmm? But I said God will make provision. He said in the time of famine, your soul shall be fed. God is faithful. So it's, a, it's not the, the life more than meat and the body than raiment. What, 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 what Jesus was saying here, brothers and sisters, that listen up, we are more concerned about the temporal rather than the eternal. If some of us were as diligent at home, as all we are about the Temporal, that which is for a moment or a season. I'm telling you, we're going experience greater peace, joy, and contentment in our lives. But then Jesus put a Google in. But then Jesus can't bold Google to you. Know. You know what I'm saying? Which of you, you worry. I don't tell you, I worry. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? So why we are worried, but it is at this deep in the brethren. Jesus said we are worried. But at the same time, we can't do nothing about it. Because guess what? He is the source. He is the provider. He is the shepherd. He is the, uh, the creator. And uh, the psalm in Psalms 24 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell it therein. Brothers and sisters, before we ask God, no. While we are asking God, a supply, all you and I need to do is to trust God. So Jesus says, even all your efforts, in all your efforts, you can't change it. You cannot change it. So when you worry about it, all you know, I had gray here, upon gray here. Uh, when you worry, when you can't change it, you worry, you expose, expose your blood vessel. When you can't change it, you worry, all you know, I bring sadness to your heart. So Jesus said, man, think about it, man. You can't do nothing. You can't do nothing about it. So then why? Yes, man. Look at this question. Even if we decide to seek the all others, we still need to seek God's help. We should not seek the all others, you know, because that is a provision. The all others come like but in the desert. The kingdom is where you and I get a three-course meal. The kingdom, brother and sister, is where the substance is. But if we decide then to, to seek after the others, we still need God's help. See what the word of God says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask. Huh? But in, oh, when the, 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 the political analysts and commentators say doom and gloom, Whose report shall you believe? Some say famine after COVID. Some say suffocation. But I'm not say them wrong. I'm not say them right to the merchant. But listen up, merchant. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help not come from superpower. My listen up, merchant. My help cometh from the Lord, who is from the beginning, who shall be at the end, because him decide the end, and the cattle are his. The silver is. The gold is. And everything is is. And he said he 
shall. He shall supply. He shall give. Not what you and I think we need, but all, everything, all that you and I stand in need. Brethren, do you know that there are some things that we stand in need? How do I even know? God ever gave something yet? God ever used somebody to give you something? And when they receive it, Brethren, I wonder, I want me to get this, sir. And sometimes all a week or two weeks after, you see oil coming handy. And sometimes you saw a shame, you know, because you are grumbling in your mouth and 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 and, 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 and say you no space. But look, you know that God knew that you will in need. And so guess what? Him supplied. Sometimes you ever say, God, how you stay, sir, man? God, how you stay, sir? Eh? One way to say, oh, you're good, sir. Oh, you're good, sir, man. Oh, I tell you, it, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. So it's an ox and it shall begin. But some people too proud there, yeah, man. But sometimes you have to tell God what you want. And sometimes you have to be specific. Nothing wrong if you're specific with God. I, I remember when, 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 when Anna was before God and, 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 the, and, and, and the priest Eli said, Woman, you're drunk, man. Uh, you, you, you come and you're drunk. Uh, and you're there altar. Uh, and, and, and you go out with your foolishness. Just say, No, my lord. My, the daughter of a, a concern, I request to God. And so, guess what? It's in my groaning of intercession. She never just said, God, I want a baby. She said, God, I want a baby. Male child, more than boy, baby. Amen. Amen. Specific, brethren. You know, too proud. Pride, man, make many of us lose out. Because it don't make sense. Say God is a mysterious God. His ways is past finding out. And you and I are determined. Oh, God must supply our need. God never listen up, brother and sister. God never tell us the terms of reference. All oh, God said, I shall, I will, I must supply your need. For I am your father, I'm your provider, I'm your shepherd. Let's a seek. But you have but let me tell you something. You have to know who can give you what, you know. <laughs> Brethren, you have to know who can give you what. If you, if you want, want pants, you know, you know I go to shoemaker, man. Not true. If your pipes start leaking, you know I go to JPS. Know who can give you what. Britain, there are some needs that bitch in a make sense. We make no contact, don't hurt her. No, the contact we make her hurt, and we make contact from her to heaven. Because something bigger than the prime minister. So listen up, Britain, listen up, man. Something bigger than your employer. And you know hear me. Something bigger than Jamaica. There are some things that we are worried about. Listen up, it be and our leaders. So you ever know who can give you what? So he says, seek. And he shall find. Eh? But you can't seek somebody who will look themselves. <laughs> ah, no, no, it's seek. Remember the kingdom I talk about, you know. He says, seek. And he shall find. You see, brothers and sisters, I believe that some of us have more confidence in our employers than where we have in God. You don't hear me? Some of us have more confidence in some people who promise to the bank we have money Friday when them get paid. And them need to wait on somebody to get them a thing. So you can get a thing. When the Lord says everything is mine, the earth is mine, and the fullness, listen up, man. How some people have gone and I run out them, but they don't understand. I God give them the money to keep. And that and then every now and then God said, Listen up, man. Give me son some of my money. Give me that. Listen up, man. Some man needs to understand themselves. That are not them are the owner. They are just the keeper. They are just used as distributor. And so when God said move, you better move. When God said release, you better release. When God said listen up, pour out, you better pour out. It's amazing, Virgin. It's amazing. It says knock. And it's a big woman, man. Virgin, do you know that? Not only God, God I tell you for knock. God I wait for open. Virgin. Not only that God I tell we for knock, you know. God ready for open, you know. 
But, but God is a gentleman. <laughs> the same like oh God relate to us God want us to relate to him in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 the Lord said behold I stand at the door and I knock and if any man open his heart door then I'll come in to the Lord and say listen up this is how me knock for you to open I want you knock so that I can open it's a two way street I'm ready to open I release a thing on you but you have to convince me say you want it to you have to convince me that you believe that me have everything that you need wrong you so you need to just knock and open and come in so the Lord said movement time action time yeah. huh why for everyone that asks it receive it Imagine sometimes you ask some people you know so then them after them tell you no not true not true Bridget. and then sometimes you ask some people and they promise you know they generally promise you know but on a run for them but we know Bridget. as one person says central can't run out you, you don't hear me, Bridget. I say, heaven can't run out. I say, the kingdom can't have recession. You know, sometimes, Bridget, me and some people talk with them. You know, nobody has a superpower. I just, over our side, God may give us a little bit more resources than the other. Because, you know what, Bridget? God gave some resources, you know, and you're full of some resources, you know. And then God make you lack something that is critical for balance out the abundance of resources, you know. And God make a dead country to have it, you know. And God tell this man, humble yourself. Eh? Give. And you shall receive. Release. And so that it flow. Eh? And sometimes, Bridget, because I'm men selfishness, not willing to work with God's program. And so we get recession, you know. God, God said, me give you A. And I give you B. And you over there, I give you C. Guess what? It's for you to interfellowship. So, A needs some B. C needs some A. Huh? And B needs some C. We are independent. Interdependent. Look at this virgin. St. John chapter 10, verse 9. Jesus says, I am the door. Hmm? I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastor. Virgin, God want you and I to have access. I said, God want you and I to have access. I said, God open up the kingdom. I said, come with children. Hmm? You remember St. John 14? He said, let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would not have told you. But I've gone to prepare a place where in the mansion, brother and sister, it doesn't make sense, God, in Christ, I prepare a mansion. How we know I'm going? But I want me for going, you know. Jesus said, I'm here at the door. So nobody can have access unless they go through the door. In one parable, Jesus share that one man go through the window. And he said, where is your door pass? <laughs> where is your pass? Because anybody go through the window, a thief. And we don't tolerate thief. You have to go through the blood. Because the blood was shed for thief. So guess what? If your thief go over the blood at Calvary and get a dip in the blood. And then you sin that word like crimson. They shall be washed and be white as snow. And you can come to the door and in spite of all you use the team it no matter who attacks you Jesus said when I see the blood I will pass over Jesus said listen up your mind for I see the blood you were on my mind you were on in my thought I die that you may live I die that you may change I die that you may have access to the kingdom awesome brethren it's awesome jesus said, i am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved 
and shall go in and out and find pasture. But you know, if every time we need a resting place, if every time we need a hiding place, if every time we need a cliff, huh? if every time we need coverage, is no. He was in John chapter 10, verse 11. He said, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. So not only that I am the doer, I am the good shepherd. That means I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But the one thing I want to say to us, you see, the moment you and I say yes to God, Jesus will not abandon you. He will not abandon you. You know why? He will not be the enemy of anything to say concerning his ability to supply. And he has made some promises to us who believe. And he's not a man that he should lie. He's not a man that he should lie. This and the good shepherd. I'm willing to, 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 to give myself. Can I tell you something, Virgin? Trust God with your future. Trust God with your future. Because, Virgin, the enemy is cunning. He will shipwreck you, you know. It makes you feel like, so guess what? This, this thing is bigger than God. But you don't know. You know, so God has a healthy self esteem. But you know, God has a healthy self esteem, you know. Because sometimes men who are borrowed bread, men who are dust, who lend bread too. I run up them about me not believing in a God and me in a church thing and. Listen up, man. Him letting him bread and not even tell him thanks. You use him bread and do everything that him forbids. God have a healthy self esteem. Okay, but some of we brethren, we say, no, sir. We don't, you're ungrateful. Okay, God alone could have been God. Believe me, think, sometimes I think about it and say, listen up, God. God, me not, me, me not want to stop your place. Keep your place. Come on, you alone can be God. So he says no, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. This is a Greek word that translates first. It's a word known as proton. P-R-O-T-O-N. Proton. And I want to look at four semantic range of this word. P-R-O-T-O-N. Proton. It's a Greek word for first. Proton. P-R-O-T-O-N. Proton. Alright? What it says. When, when, when the writer says seek ye first, that means God must take first place. Hmm? God should always have first place. Huh? Proton. And the first semantic range means place. So I'm saying, basically, it has say first place. There's a song writer that says, I put you in front. In front of my melody. But that's song that deep in theology, you know. For what? It's all about you. Yeah? I put you in front. So it's not even so much the, the melody and the voice. But it's about praises to you. It also speaks to first as it relates to order. In essence, this God should be our number one priority. And the things of God should be second to none. The problem is, brothers and sisters, we create our itinerary hmm? and say to God, if anything, I'm going to put an A or B at the bottom. Any other business, anything that you seek to add. Hmm? But you think we sing, my life is not my own. To you, I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. How many times, Virgin, you and I may find ourselves singing lies? Hmm? Be saying the right thing. It speaks about God should ask me first as it relates to time. The same semantic range. It means 
first of all. So God should be first of all. So if there's going to be any competition, it has to be clear that God has to be first of all. He should be before all. So not only that he should be first of all, but he should be before all. Then it goes further. That as it relates to circumstances. Bridget, can I tell you, as we seek to seize opportunity, there are two things that you and I should always bear in mind. Will this pull us away from fellowship with God? To number one. Number two, will this bring glory to God? Bridget, it's a serious thing, you know. Will this pull me away from God? Or will this bring deeper fellowship? Also, it's speaking about first in regards to importance. Bridget, can I, thanks. Can I tell you something, Bridget? For many persons who say that they believe in God is not as important as they say, you know. Bridget, oh, you know what? That a person or a thing is important to you. It's the priorities that you give to that person or that thing. The quality time that you give to that person or that thing. So why would we be saying the right thing, singing the right thing? Is God a priority? Are the things of God a priority? Oh, it's demonstrated by virtue of our level of commitment. Bridget, do you know that we as humans, we were a priority to Jesus? So outside of Jesus wanting to fulfill the will of his father to die, because we were a priority, you know why he was able to say, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. A priority. So the question is, are we a priority? A priority. Is he a priority to, to us? So it says, what we should seek first? The kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God, Bridget? This is where a lot of persons. It is the ultimate sovereign rule of God in our lives and over our lives. The ultimate sovereign rule Mm -hmm. the ultimate sovereign rule of God in our lives that means he has to be Lord in our lives first of all for you and I to be effective witnesses for him but look at this person I'm not worried about church you know and my place in church mm -mm. I'm worried about my place in the kingdom of God can I tell you something, Virgin? Right now, while I'm on earth, heaven is not my priority. You know what is my priority? Being a member of the kingdom of God. I can't go to heaven unless I'm first a part of the kingdom of God. A lot of people don't understand that, you know, Virgin. It's when you and I experience the kingdom and function in the kingdom, heaven carry greater meaning and significance to us. You know a lot of people don't understand that. Do you know a lot of people just comfortable just occupying church and are connected with the kingdom? Can I tell you something, Virgin? Do you know that no power resides in the church? Power resides in the kingdom. And when the people in the kingdom get in the building, I saw the power manifest. Why do you think a lot of churches are just barren and empty? They are going on because they have an order of service. But if the people don't immerse in a kingdom where the power of God can first impact their lives, bringing about a transformation, there be no manifestation of power until there's a first impact of that power on the inside. So 
So the churches that will do well are the churches that understand the importance of the kingdom. And the rule and the reign of the kingdom in the church. That's why Bridget, it, it cannot be that many pastors are, when the word of God in black and white said, thou shalt not. Pastors are said, we don't accept that. Listen up, keep that to yourself. It's about the kingdom. You are not called to talk where you believe. You are called to be a witness of the cross. Keep your personal position to yourself. You are not, Bridget, can, can I tell you something, Bridget? Do you know as a people like God, we are not called to, to express how we feel about, about God and church? You know, we are called to be a record to know and be witness of that which we have experienced. Let your light so shine before men. That one. So they may see. But you can't shine until you are impacted. You cannot shine until the light of Jesus is shone within you. You and I cannot be the righteousness of Jesus Christ until we experience the blood. There's a cleansing in the blood. And that's what I think one person to understand. Is that what we think is that what we say is what the authority of the kingdom requires of us. And until you and I understand that, we're going to be like the children of Israel in the church, going around in circles. And because some people now change people, like a backslide, and some people are like dead and go to hell, even though they've been in the church for many years. Because they fail to allow the kingdom to reign and rule in their hearts. I think many churches struggle. Many churches struggle because a lot of members in the church are not allowing the kingdom to rule and reign in their hearts. So they get in the building, it's a state that they are in manifests itself. So let's see some people struggle to adhere and because there's a disconnect to the kingdom. You the writer says something down inside of me telling me to go on. The Holy Ghost down inside of me telling me to go on. And then the writer says something on the inside, working on the outside. There can be no working on the outside until there's an internal transformation. And that's why we struggle. And the time has come and the time is now that we have to authoritatively speak the word of the kingdom. And to say to some person, hold your peace and be silent. Because what you're saying is rubbish. You can talk how much you, you have a relationship with God. And you've got to have a good thing going on. Until the kingdom rule and reign in your heart. You're not ready yet. You're just Israelite and moving a wilderness. Still I say you're Israelite. But rejecting Yahweh. When I think Bridget and I learn, when Israelites decide to rebel against God in building the golden calf, while well, them still have been named, don't go back there, you know. God had disowned them, you know. He got to Moses. <laughs> Your people, them. The question is as we gather in church, and we are saying, Oh, you're my father, you're my God, you're my Lord. What is it God is saying? But you ever study the word enough to kind of understand the mind of God, you know? Because Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2 say, God directly, directly and progressively revealing himself to the angels, to the prophets, but in these days, to the word. Examine the interaction that God would have with men of all concerning how his people respond. So the moment they turn from God, you know, even though they still carrying the name Israelite, you know, God said to Moses, "You're a people." 
But you know, so that deep, you know what just coming in my spirit? You know, when the Lord said, Moses, you're a people. You notice how Moses is in the wilderness. You know what God said, Moses, you're a people. Can you hear Moses now? God. Nobody now for dead. How people sin and people are saying, overlook it. How people run and rude and people say, overlook it. And that Moses tell God, Moses call God for engaging in a corruption. The people then build a golden calf and bow down and worship it. And God said to Moses, Moses, your people them are sin. And Moses recognized that the moment God said, your people them. Moses knows there's something wrong. You know, as a little child, uh, and you play football, and you kick the body hungry, you're kissing, kissing. And you, yes, no, Spanish tone. Huh? Something will happen. Everybody want to take one himself. And Moses, when God said that to Moses, Moses said, God, nobody, no half a dead. And then Moses go further. Yeah, Moses to God, no. God, if you kill them, the Egyptians are going to say, because you can't manage. Virgin, that deep, you know. Hold the people them for disobey God. Hold the people them for sin against God. Is it the same thing happening in churches today? People doing wrong and people are saying, nobody now have to get punishment. Virgin, these things are in the Bible for our learning. Look, look at it, Virgin. It's before God punished Moses. I soon come back to this. It's before God punished Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 33. He would have lost it to Moses. I made you a God unto my people that you may glorify me before my people but you obey the people and dishonor me look at it Bridget who sent the people to my Egypt no God but you know God sent Israelite to Egypt you know, you know that God sent them down there deliberately. Matter of fact, before God sent them, God prophesied they're going to be down there for 400 years. Before they went, God said they're going to go down there. Why? God said, I'm going to send them down there to multiply. That the place that I promised them, they're able to occupy it. They're able to fill it all. Because at present, the land is not civilized. And a lot of wild animals is in the land. I don't know what I'm saying. God said, I'm going to bring you down to Egypt. I'm going to cause the Egyptian to find favors with you. And I'm going to allow some other nations to go and fix up the land. That's what the Lord said. You're going to go and live in some houses where you never build. You're going to drink from some well that you never dig. You're going to drink some, uh, some olives that you never plant. So how God sending people down there call you To lead these people out. And then people them disobey. And then you know why to come to God. And many of us as pastors in our trouble with God, you know. Because God calling people unto righteousness. And we are telling people them to so them now to live righteous. We are telling people them to so them now to take it too serious. How we if you do that? Oh, if you tell the people them say it's okay to dress certain way, to live certain way, when God says you should not do it. A lot of us as pastors are going to get some serious stripes. Jeremiah 23, 1, woe be unto the pastors who lead the people astray. Who lead the people astray? Where God gave us his word and we decide to do otherwise. We decide to do otherwise. Let's move back to here. Powerful thing in the Virgin. What does the kingdom entail, Virgin? The kingdom entail is three things. Just in case, Virgin, we, 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 we lose the priority and understanding. Hear what it says. One, Romans 14 17. Give us, Paul, give us an idea of what the kingdom entails. 
Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Here it Paul says, For the kingdom of God is not meat. Brethren, <laughs> brethren, is someone believers in our trouble? Who abandon the kingdom, say them got earned meat. Hmm? For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Why say it's not meat and drink? Because these two are part of the all others. The meat and the drink is a part of the all others. In essence, they are the given. But Paul went further by saying, but righteousness. And to be righteous is not to be right, but to be true. I share and choose that in Johnson in Bible study. We, we were saying that as people of God, we are so concerned about other members knowing about our sins. How do we have a thing no pause to hide and hide from each other? But little we know a God who passed the verdict. Huh? That's what the word of God says in Psalm uh, 19, verse 11. It says, the fear of the Lord is clean. So you know, fear God, I don't fear God. So it can't be when we're in the presence of each other, we do the right thing. But when we're in other spaces where we, we know of each other, and person don't know who we are, we do things and things that because they don't know, they can't restrict us. But remember, Bridget, why they may not physically restrict us, God will take his anointing from us. David said in Psalm 51, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, nor take your Holy Spirit from me, but restore unto me the joy of service can I tell you something in the house of God a lot of person in born again lost the joy of God and they find all sorts of excuses as to why they are not fellowshipping because the joy of the Lord is no more In essence, David says, when the Holy Spirit takes off, it becomes like oxygen cut off. Spiritual oxygen cut off. Because it's the Spirit of oh, listen, brother, it's the Spirit of God that be a record that we are children of God. We can talk as much as we want to talk. But we are pastor, we are bishop, we are pastor, we are reverend, most reverend, right, reverend, deacon, minister, whatsoever, uh, whatever, head me whole, brothers and sisters, it's the Holy Spirit that be a record that we are children of God. It's not all longer in the business as some people say. God, God, not the grandchildren. Everybody has children. And everybody has to go through the blood. And everybody has to live according to the manual. Because I want heaven. Amen. And we are going. But the word of God said the righteousness is first being true before God. Says so that where I am before you, but who am I before God? So why we may still, and some of us are bam rush it. We know we move away. Still bam rush it. Still bam rush it. Some of us before 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 we humble ourselves, we read a mash up church. We read a mash up church. We know we don't love God again. We know the the things that got in our priority again. How we know, Britain, that listen up, man. He that love the Lord meets often. Uh, he that love the Lord pants for God like how the deer pants on the water brook. I will use our sort to execute the word of God. Say the fear of the Lord is clean. So if you are asleep and somebody wake you up, you, are, you must behave like Christian. And if you go upon a trip, you must be Christian. And if you take a plane and go to America, you must be Christian. I know, tell me, say America, what different type of Christianity than with Jamaica? I don't know where America says that, what England says that, what Canada says. It's what the Word of God says. So the Word says. But look on this, Richard, look on this. So it's righteousness, right? Which is truth. Peace. Virgin, you want people want peace? Can I tell you the truth, Virgin? So, when we hear 
of first committing suicide. I because I'm not of the peace, you know. Hmm? But you, nothing can replace peace, you know. And there's only one supplier of peace. The Prince of Peace, Jehovah Shalom. Hmm? But you, I want source. One source that can supply peace. Hmm? You would have to say, peace of God, cover me through the storms. Cover me. Peace of God. Cover me. And then the writer said, when peace is like a river. Hallelujah. When joy. Hmm? Imagine, you and I care to say it is well with our soul until we experience the peace of God. You know, you know what is the evil about it? They might turn the song now a funeral song. Or some person who live their life without God and Christ. They want it on them program. Hmm? Mm. Powerful song. And joy. Imagine. Imagine. It's if you don't have no joy, you're going weak, you know. The joy of the Lord is your strength. It's if you're not on the joy, the things that God have become a burden. Imagine. That's what we talk about righteousness. Did you notice how righteousness come first? Why righteousness come first, Bridget? A truth. Bridget, truth. A lot of person know of the joy. Hmm? I don't joy. And because of that, Bridget, the enemy play a room for rent. If the joy of the Lord is our strength, I went on a joy. I mean, who weak? And I'm telling the Bridget, there's a devil out there in the Bridget. You must say, anybody leave themselves careless. <laughs> no matter who you be, you know, my joy away. Bridget, you don't hear me. Anybody who leave themselves careless, they will dry away. Here with Luke 12, verse 37 says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God wants us to have the kingdom. Bridget, amidst all that is happening around us, God wants your nine. And only to have access to the kingdom. To be able to abide in the kingdom. Luke 12, 34 says. For where your treasure is. There will your heart be also. Bridget. You know some things that hard. You want to know your treasure? Huh. Let's look at the things um, who, that occupy most of your time. And your attention. Not given there. That has become your treasure. So, so if you find that reading the word and praying is a struggle, it means it's not a treasure. Hmm? It's not a treasure. But guess what I'm reading? It's of the word of God and praying is a treasure. Fellowship will become your treasure. We're going to mash down some life with some people are talking about it. Because the only way we can help people, you know. It's true, you know. Bridget, if, if, if reading the word and praying is a treasure, fellowship has become natural. You know why? Because those who you have fellowship with is of the same kind. So it, it, it's like magnets. Pulling persons together. And when they come together, Bridget, it's so edifying. It's like a wildfire. No one can quench it. But Jesus said, give me a heart. And I will give you my father's kingdom. Oh, one we can't get the kingdom. I was that person, Bridget, can I tell you something, Bridget? Our salvation is not free. It's just that Jesus paid. And we don't have to pay nothing. Free to us. But Jesus paid all. Hmm? It means that, Bridget. What I mean is it's not free, no, Bridget. Don't get me wrong. I'm saying that you and I, even though we don't have to pay per se, hmm? money, or whatever, there was one who loved us unconditionally. 
That while we were yet sinners, he was willing to die for us. But even though he has done that for us, hear what him said to me now. Nothing for nothing. Something for something. You want kingdom? Give me a heart. It's a trade-off. People want God's kingdom, but you know, them still are willing to them heart. <laughs> eh? And the only way the kingdom will be the treasure in our heart is when we trade off, freely trade off. Freely trade off. Just say, give me out and I will give you my father's kingdom. Proverbs 23, 26 says, My son, give me thine heart and let thy eyes observe my ways. Proverbs 23, 26. I close off with 1 Kings Well, last two texts. First Kings 3, 7 to 14. I want to do a, a, a simple exegete on this whole concept. Solomon's request before God. Solomon became king, uh, taken over from his father. There are some things I want to highlight here, Virgin. How Solomon would have understand the concept about the kingdom first. First Kings chapter 3, verse 7 to 14. Powerful text. First Kings chapter 3. Verse 7 to 40. Hear what Solomon says. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. Brethren, that statement is loaded. Firstly, I'm going to do a simple exegeting of it. Firstly, hear what Solomon said. As far as I'm concerned, no way I can walk in my father's shoes. <laughs> because when, David, when, when Solomon became king, all the nations that surround Israel were at peace with Israel. Not because they volunteered, volunteer. Because of God who was with Israel under the leadership of David just to hear Israel and people in fear. So Solomon was saying, I, God, I thank you for, for considering me, for honoring me to play this role. But no way at all I can match my shoes with the man that I'm taking over. Look at a different attitude now. In a church today, people in a mind position, maybe forget up on them resume. But they're not doing the work. Hmm? No, Drew. You believe that if all the heads of the department in the church seek to represent the weak when their department on duty, you think they're able to influence the other members? You cannot give people what you don't have. You can't lead people to places that you're not willing to go. Some people make it look like they might look at a favor. But you know, we have to be careful that we are talking about we are making sacrifice of God. Me and you can't make sacrifice of God. And you and I only benefit when we do work for God. God don't need nothing from we. He's the only king that don't need us to validate him being a king. That's why, brethren, there are some songs you can't sing, you know, but every call election vote out Satan. It's important we understand this person. It's an honor you and I get to serve. And sometimes we are like high people look and say, I say, coup on we know. Coup on we. God said, Abraham, Abraham is my friend. And Abraham did work and dead. God said, listen, man, I don't think I have that type of fellowship with humanity like what I have with Moses. But Moses dead. Eh? Not true, brethren. There are some greats of the Bible. Them do them time and them dead. They know me and you get a little chance and we are high people look self. We get a little chance to do something for the kingdom. And you know, we now do nothing more up there. Good for you. You get that honor. 
one thing, but can I tell you something? One, one thing that I, 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 I've learned, but I never lose sight of it. The highest level of work that I will ever engage in as a human being is in the church. You know why, Virgin? Every other work that I will do on the effect present. When I do work for God, it affects the present <laughs> huh? and the future. It affects the present and it affects the future. Why you think, Virgin, I, 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 I live my life in such a way that I don't mean nothing pull me away from fellowship with God? It's not because I couldn't take out some responsibility and make more money, Virgin, but I realize that when the dust settle, I have to give an account for my soul and those who God placed under my stewardship. But you think I couldn't take out some even duties and make more money? Huh? I'm going to turn, me turn them down. Because my philosophy in life in a Virgin, where you're born, you'll be. <laughs> so if thy vows are upon me, O God, we are born, I will be. But many persons not see it like that. They, they see it as if they are doing God a favor. So Solomon said, God, who am I? Send me a king. <laughs> Virgin, who am I? Who are you to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? What an honor, man. Before salvation, we were weaklings. The devil does box us there and box us over there and told us in a Cameroon and God reached down and, and pull us from the mire clear. He wash us in his blood. He speak in our lives because some of us virgin, not only that people distort our thinking, but we start believing and the writer said, God pick us up. Him, him turn we are one. Him plant the feet and I are grown. Some of us they have some derogative name in the street and no people that call us miss and Mrs. and I call us sir and madam and listen up Britain and we are found fool some people who are make appointment with we when we were in Egypt I will not set appointment them till I still I tell we say them busy and them are seek we out now and we are hype Virgin, it takes me off. I'm full. We don't got a suicide. It come like slow poison. Sure it, but it comes. Suffering precedes it. Since so I know not how to go out and come in, Solomon said, "God, I don't know if you do. Eh, me not even sure me say much as you can lead people." Mm? I'm not even sure of myself. Mm? But I'm literally, I say, God, I can't even walk until unless you hold my hand. Mm? Unless, unless you walk with me and keep reminding me that I am your own. God, we can't do nothing. It, it, look what it says, it goes further. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people. Bridget, let me tell you something. So as a child of God, you can't think selfish. Too many persons who say I'm a Christian, born again believer, selfish. They must stop to think how their action affect the body. They just live as them like, they relate as, and they not consider. Suppose Jesus did not think like that. Bridget, remember, you know, when it was before Pilate scored, you know, I didn't pity him, I got to die for you know. Do you know, I pity him, I say, away with him. I didn't pity him, I got to cross off. Huh? Do you know, I pity him, I say, crucify him. I did him, I got to cross off. Can't tell some Bridget? I can't imagine when Jesus took a crown, you know, he see some people will get fish and bread. If I saw my widow, I said, Are oh, you eating my fish and bread? Hmm? He saw so many people who get fish and bread. 
Jesus saw some of the people who were in Jerusalem who put the palm leaf on the, on the ground and they were pass on the donkey. And some of them who take off them shirt because they never get the palm leaf. And I sing, Hosanna in the highest. A pilot's court. And them I say, give us Barabbas. Away with him. But he always consider people. Why he died? For he loved the world. For God so loved the world. Let us stop thing self. And because of that, Virgin, everybody suffers. Because when you and I think self and be selfish, it carry a burden on the others. And it creates discouragement to others. When you abandon fellowship, those who are faithful after a while are going to get discouraged. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help us. So Solomon says, the people which thou hast chosen, that means are not ordinary people, them. Your people, them. Your people, them, God. So we have to be, Bridget, can I tell you something, Bridget? That's why I never lose sight, you know. No matter what, become prevalent in the Christian church in a Bridget about what the word of God says. And, and many renowned pastors and, and bishops are going against the word of God, Bridget. And now nah, change course, you know. Before the mole, I lower see it. Hmm? Bridget, in the kingdom and a majority rule, Bridget, don't lose sight, you know. So I beg you guys and warn you guys, stop looking at other people because they might do it. You know, means they got to prove of it. <laughs> One thing I learned about God, you know, God have a temperament, they say, Bridget. When God said to the Israelites, so they go to Canaan, kill everybody that are Canaanites. He must say the baby upon the suckling. You know what God said that? You know what God said that, Virgin? Why God said that, Virgin? God was not in the business of killing people, you know. God was in the business of killing culture. Culture. But when we try to hold fast to some things, any will, any will, will, will fly the gate. We're wondering for the same place this. Because there's going to be a shifting of the culture. And when there's a shifting of the culture, there's going to be a shifting in the atmosphere. Remember Daniel when he prayed? And the demons of my Persia meet this. Why, virgin? Because Persia meet this embrace darkness. Hallelujah! You know the word God said, Virgin? No man take the strong man goods unless he buy the strong man. That's why Gabriel, Michael, I mean, and the angel of war have wrestled the demon. They've been a push up. Bind them! That the answer could I release. Only if you understand the depth of spiritual warfare, Virgin. Virgin, if you found fool, simply stand the house of God, the enemy plunder the people. Then. How the enemy are plunder the people, Virgin? I based on the culture where we create. If we create a culture of fearing God, if we create a culture of obedience, if we create a, a, a culture where people accept the statues of God, I'm telling you, no demon from hell will want to lurk about before that virgin in my path. Them holy men straight. And sometimes I try to stamp out some culture and people selfishly. You know why? Because it's evil and wicked. Because we're thinking about others and the implication. Thinking about the forefathers who have left us a legacy. Thinking about the generation who's going to come after us. I always say to the person, what kind of church you are leave? People can be replaced. 
but what are they replaced with? So the word of God said, now when all the elders who overlaid Joshua died, you know, I mean, so elders that took over, you know. But what quality were they? And because they were not of quality, Israel plunged in the darkness. To the Israelites, when God said, wipe out the Canaanites. It's when the first tribe to make an alliance, God not said nothing. And when the twelve tribe to make an alliance, God get up and God said, remember the arrangement. But we not understand. The brimstone and fire now just drop separate God say more obedience. And guess who do better? We are watch some people who move away from where the word of God say no. And we not say nothing harm to them. And them still have church and them still a clap and church tonight. And them sound good. But what does the word of God say? So why are they have in fellowship? Is it God approved? So Solomon, so God are your people then. That cannot. God, he said, God, your people are. They are innumerable, God. So I need you. I need your help. Virgin is one of the most simple but humble prayer I've seen in the Old Testament. You know what the next verse is? Give therefore thy servant also an understanding heart to judge thy people. Look at the people of God said, they want more money. And if you can get another job and make more money at the expense of their fellowship time. And that which we say, well, we are go after the Lord say, that is already earmarked. And all others will be added. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. All others is already approved, but you know why it's not released? Because we are by the kingdom. We are by the kingdom. So we not get it. Because we're not the key. You would allow to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1. This book of the law. Don't let it depart from your mouth. Live by it. Wherever you put your foot, I yearn. Anyway, you try to yearn. Anyway, listen up, Bertrand. You see, the problem is, Bertrand, we want to claim, but we don't want to go for the key. Because we want to live our own life, so we have the kingdom. And to the day of the mind, we, we, we will deceive people in the church. And the more material stuff people want, people need. To surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That the all others can manifest in their lives. But look at it. Those who seek to live their life for God in the sense of order their life in such a way. You notice some things just flow naturally for them. And then they, and, and, and they're doing, Virgin. Uh, that which was promised to all others. It uh, a release in the Virgin. The all others. So he says, give this for thy servant also an understanding how to judge thy people. Look at it, Virgin. Solomon said, God, equip me to serve. Hmm? You the people know this, no? And my time now for do me. Who feel all the world for, for hmm? my time now for live my best life? Rubbish. They never said to even in the garden, you know. So if you eat of this, you're gonna have your, you live your best life. <laughs> Dead. Eh? The man the woman by debt. And cause the whole world after that. After you run. To save them life from debt. Selfishness. Solomon said, God, equip me to serve. Do we still have people in the house of God that say to God, equip me to serve? Do we still have people in the house of God saying to God, anoint me to serve? Or anoint me that we can make a money? Anoint me that we can go start a ministry and get famous? Are people still saying to God, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me? Just says, 
that I may discern between good and bad. Solomon said, God, I want to please you. Equip me to please you. Brethren, do we still ask God that? Equip me to please you. Empower me to please you. Anoint me to honor you. For who is able to judge this so great a people? God, thank you for canceling me here. But I need you. I need you, God. You go straight up. And the speech pleased the Lord. You know what pleased the Lord? Because what the Lord literally said, I this be required. Virgin, you know what pleased the Lord? Look how God respond. Look at how God respond. And the, and the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou asked this thing, what thing? Equipping to serve. And has not asked for thyself long life. Virgin, we have to be careful that we pray just a prayer for ask God to bless you, you know. Huh? Well, if you start praying, God help me to know you that I make, I make you be known. Eh? Not true, Virgin. When if you start praying, ask God for grace to serve him. Ask God to anoint us that we can truly love him. The Lord said, because he never asks a long life. He never asks anything for you. Virgin, I've been teaching us the importance of us seeing ourselves as a drink offering. People don't believe them something again because people send my ear from God to them now for listen to what pastor said. You and I are called to pour out for the greater good of others. The only way you and I can truly please God and serve God and his people is when we see ourselves as a drink offering, accept ourselves as a drink offering, and be willing and ready to pour out for the greater good of others. Stop asking yourself, what is in it for me? That is of the devil. So no, so not because you didn't ask a long life, neither ask what? Riches for thyself. You know what Solomon said? When he said, God, grant me this, 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 this wisdom. Virgin, do you know that wisdom is a tool that creates everything? Riches, fame, you name it. But guess what? Wisdom is given to serve. Hmm? Wisdom is given to serve. You know what they say a lot of men do you know? God give them in Christ through the Holy Spirit. His gifts. And the man of my girl and a hustle. Hmm? The man of my girl and a hustle with God give. But you didn't say that. Hmm? The man of my girl and better than I call youth services. And I tell people to pay money. Hmm? When I use God's gift to hustle. But the gifts are given for the edification of the body of Christ. But see, because they know, they, they're worried about the all others. They lose sight. Let me speed it up. Nor ask, ask the life of thine enemies. Wow, that deep. But this is a prayer that you and I should always keep reminding ourselves. And, ex and use to examine our life, you know. Neither ask the life of thine enemies. But as ask for thyself understanding to discern judgment. In essence, God said, because you ask to equip, to serve. I'm impressed. I am impressed. Behold, look at this prayer. Oh, God is impressed. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given you, given thee a wise and understanding heart. But in case it's something, do you know that the more you and I give ourselves to God, is the more God release upon our lives? Why? Because the release that God gives us is equipping so the more we do the more we need a release hmm? yeah, well, yeah, some people are worried about them want to know what 
What is the will of God for their life concerning this church? Rubbish. Whatever you find the answer to do it. What well, yeah, do you discover? You don't even sweep, sweep the church, sweep it. And while they are sweep, sing. Huh? And if other people are arrested to sweep and then they come to sweep, sweep and sing. But guess what? God is no man's debtor. And if you sweep, don't go and talk, say you sweep. Okay, you do it unto God. And God will see it in secret. What secret? The secret of your heart. Will reward you openly. So that there was none like thee before thee. It impressed God. God said, Listen, I'm going to give you one wisdom there that nobody before you. You know what I mean, Virgin? David was before him. Abraham was before him. Hmm? Name it, Virgin. A lot of them were before him. No one is going to get this wisdom. So, I'm going to show you something, Virgin. Why God emphasizes. Neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. So in a year time, nobody is going to match you. Look at this, Virgin. And I also given thee that which thou hast not asked. What is that? The all others. So when Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, which I don't want new principle. It's an age old principle that God has established as relates to covenant with men. You will allow to Abraham, walk before me, and I made thee a great nation. But then they came a time between Abraham have how much had a sheep, how much had a goat. No, all of us, that man. But what do you live up with? No, two pieces of clothes over him shoulder and one stick. And say, come, Sarah, Lord, call me. They step up by faith. Then the Lord goes further. There shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. Better, this is a critical text, you know. You know what that means? The only person, you know, the Lord makes sure say, no king. Huh? Will be wiser than Solomon in his time. But there will be a king that wiser than Solomon after Solomon, Jesus Christ. So, so the Lord outlined the text. Look at this number, Jen. And if thou will walk, but before I look at this, Virgin, you know what the Lord bless Solomon? Look at it, Virgin. That which Solomon asks for, up to today, they may you a benefit. <laughs> this is why God, Virgin, I will understand. What Solomon did? Solomon, as he teach that his time, Solomon writes that for many years to come, people can benefit. This is why the Lord said, I honor you. God saw Solomon's heart. Solomon could have just create fame unto himself and only keep sessions. I mean, people come and listen. But guess what, Virgin? When he died, and when they die, guess what? They said, end. Solomon wrote over 3,000 proverbs. Which is a legacy to us today. And that's where the Lord said, listen, man, I'm going to bless you, Solomon, because I see your heart. I've taught us in the past, Virgin, that the only thing that will overlive us is our works. But if our works are not good, it will go through the fire. And it will be burned. If it's good, it will remain. If it's not good, it will be devoured. Look at this now, Virgin. Look at this. Very, very profound. Look at this. The only way you fight your works can be deemed good in going through the fire is when the works comprises of two things. To glorify God and to edify others. Glorify God and edify others. The question is, Virgin, are we living to glorify God as well as for the edification of others? Hmm? That men may see his good works and glorify him and may all who come behind us find us faithful. It's amazing. The Lord says, as I wrap up this, and if thou will walk, so Lord says, I'm going to do all of this, but it comes with a condition. 
You know that bridging there was a time Solomon backslide. So all that God promised him, it came with a condition. He what the Lord said. And if thou will walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then will I lengthen thy days. Hmm? But do you know that when Solomon moved out of the promise we make with God, he, w he went mad? Do you know that Solomon went mad one at a time? You don't know that, Bridget. Mm -hmm. Listen, though. Solomon, after a while now, started to use the wisdom to glorify himself. When you read the book, Bridget, of Ecclesiastes, Solomon said, him, him no folly. The man studied till the man mad. The man studied to a point that he can't go no more. Because what, what he did, Bridget, he started to use the wisdom of God that he, he promised God that he's going to use to serve people to start promote himself. And God make him go to a point that he can't go no more. It's like a roadblock. And that's why he said, all is vanity and the extension of spirit. In this, you know what Solomon was saying? Anything that you and I do that doesn't seek to glorify God and edify others is going to be destructive. Both to us and to others. Psalms 37, 25, the final verse says, I have been young. Hmm? No matter what the kid were even. Eh? And now I'm old. Do we believe that verse, Bridget? Yet have I not seen the righteous. Who's the righteous? The one who seeks to live, be true before God. I don't see the righteous forsaken, nor is seed begging. Bread. And brethren, a part of us being righteous, you know, is remaining faithful even in difficult times. Brethren, do you know that's a part of the righteousness? Hmm? And when the going get tough, and the tough get going, you and I are still required to be faithful. That's who's the righteous, you know, brethren. Because the word of God says, if you and I put our hands, to the plow and pull back the hand. It's like a dog going back to the vomit. I think Paul rough up the Galatians like that. But after they get faith, they use faith through grace to get salvation. I start to tell Paul that there's some things that they need to do to be saved. I'm going to man, I'm a foolish man. But how can you and I say in this 21st century that we need to live for better ourselves? And from the day we're born, from the day we're born, I gotta supply our needs. Who made the devil a fool with? From the day we're born, brethren, that's what it takes us, you know. We are worried, but we can't add a cubit. So if we allow the devil to release that lie to the point that some person abandon the house, abandon fellowship, abandon the responsibility to say that they are making ends meet. Or if you abandon the source and expect to have a release? There's a text in Isaiah chapter 1. You know what the writer said? After the people turned from God and I suffered, hear what Isaiah said to them. Why ye be stricken? anymore. That means the people turn from God and go, on a, and go on a path. And now with the thing, I crumble. People still are telling themselves that there's a way out. I said, man, stop. Why are you self-inflicting yourself? Why are you pushing yourself down a close and still are telling yourself that, that there's an exit at the end? Why are you telling yourself that you need to do some things to you when the truth is a care at a cubit? It is a setup. It is a setup. People of God, let us get up. It's a setup. But at the same time, we conveniently, when destruction comes, we bow to God. Sometimes we 
drawn away with her own enticement and loss. Abandon her soul and the nourishing of her soul. And when we get weak, you know, even if it, Bridget, when people drawn away and malnourish them soul and struggle, them blame the church. What the church is not doing. But the question is, what are you doing for your soul? What are you doing for your soul? Bridget, if your soul is buried, they can't help nobody. And you continue on the path of malnourishment. It means that you have always a claim. And they come a time going to go cut off because it, it, is, it is in giving. You receive. I don't think a lot of person understand you know. God will cut off. You miss everything? God will cut off. That loving, merciful God will cut off. He can't run out of grace, but he will pull grace from you. And those men who go around doing evil, you know. A grace, but them that dead the moment, them coming evil, you know. But God, why God release grace? God want them to stop and look into themselves and say, No, I deserve death. And God give me life. I'm going to turn as a sign of appreciation and gratitude. I'm going to turn. But then after a while, them, them, them not only take that for granted, them start making it look like a freedom ability to navigate until one day God goes so. God, God have a tendency to, you know, when they want to think of peace and safety, he looks at some pull of grace. As in pull of grace, they realize not only that they are vulnerable, but they are facing their end and there's nothing they can do about it. People of God, the Lord said we should keep, see the kingdom. Don't make the devil trick us. The all others are ready. Approved. The all others are already approved. But guess what? There's a devil who wants to devour it. So each one of us have to go to the kingdom to get a key to unlock. Each one of us is a key. That God has signed to us. So nobody can enter your door. Nobody can screech in by your blessings. Nobody can scam out the thing. And nobody can cut no key. You know something going through my mind? Write my name. Write my name up there. Touch my finger on the golden pen. The golden pen. He's one of us name. He says in the revelation, the Lord said, I'm going to write down my name. That when him open the book. Come on, a some fire, you know. And if them try it in Genesis chapter 3, you know, why wouldn't they not try it in the 21st century? Genesis chapter 3. And I'm, I even try some fire, God. Disobey God and I in a hide and secret God. And then the next thing I try to flip it pan God about a year for all. A year for all. So the Lord said, guess what? I'm going to write to the name and on the deeds that when I open the book, no man can say them can't recall. Because I'm going to make it before us. Can you know what I'm While we have a past and we have a future, everything present with God. So God, I got activate your mind that we see clearly and use this Holy Spirit to convict we are, that we can't so we can't recall and that's when the word of God said there they would be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth God bless you Virgin God bless you God bless you so remember Virgin seek the kingdom and not the all others 
that is already earmarked by God. Bless God. I, I don't know, brother, you can say the question. Uh, okay, uh, any question from us, Bridget, uh, before, as we close? All right, there's no question, Bridget. Uh, we will close off tonight. I want to thank you uh, for tuning in uh, to another night of study. We're going to look to the Lord in prayer. Could I invite us out to stand, Bridget, as we, uh, we close off in prayer? And so, Father, we are grateful for tonight. We thank you, God, for this opportunity where we can fellowship in this manner. We thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit who is present here tonight. We thank you, God, for his role even in the success of our Bible study tonight in the organ and Father unveiling the truth of thy word even to our hearts. Father, tonight we are grateful, God and Father, for the explaining and the opening of thy word, God and Father. I pray tonight, God and Father, that we may not just be hearers of your word, but more so, God, we may be doers of your word. It's important, God, for us to hear, but more so, God and Father, it's blessed even as we seek to be doers of thy word. So, Lord, let not the enemy rob this word, but rather, Lord, as we hide this word in our heart, God, I pray, Lord, that you may, O God and Father, build a wall, God and Father, that the enemy will not snatch this word. I pray, God and Father, that this word will bring faith, O God and Father, as this word, O God and Father, release grace. Reminding us, God and Father, the need for salvation and the need for Christ in our lives. Father, we pray that you may continue to bless even this ministry, even the ministry of reconciliation through your church. And Lord, as we tune in week after week to connect, not only with the immediate brethren here in Kintyre, but those, O God and Father, would connect all over this world. I pray, God and Father, that your Holy Spirit will breathe upon thy word, that God, they will not just hear salmon, but rather, God and Father, that they hear you through your word by your Holy Spirit, God. They will not just see Kintaya Gospel Hall, but God, but they will see God and Father, the voice of God through His Word speaking to us in this 21st century. Father, I pray that you may continue to watch over your church, your people, as we continue to serve you, God, because God and Father, we know that you are no man's debtor, and even as we serve God, a crown of life awaits us. As we are about to go at this time, Lord, may you go with us, go before us, fly with chops of an adversary, God. May we, oh God and Father, reach our, our destination. And safe, little God. You know our mode of transportation. Be with us as we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless God. We raise the right hand for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. And may cause his face to shine upon you. And his countenance rest upon you.